Okay, so this is probably a short video. Um, so what I started doing was researching how to harden or better secure that bastion host. Uh, last time we basically just spun up an instance of, I think it was Ubuntu 18, and then just put it behind a security group, right? And, you know, I was thinking about the host itself, right? And long story short, it turns out that uh, Amazon has a um, quick start that pretty much is, I guess it's kind of their de facto way of recommending how to create those bastion hosts. And we're going to basically switch over to that. So the first thing I did, just so you know, I went into the config of Terraform and ripped out the bastion host section. So I, I didn't I ripped it all out, right? And instead, um, I come here to uh, AWS Quick Starts, and I can just type in just. Now, normally, I'm loath to do this to, to, to kind of use off-the-shelf things, but this is done by Amazon itself, and. Um, I started to do it myself and then I realized it was a lot of work to secure it properly and I've so I deferred to essentially this. So basically this quick start basically gives you the ability to spin up and we'll talk about the key features of it. Um, well, we'll go through it in a minute, but um, it gives you the ability just to spin it up and, and relatively easily have a secure uh, bastion host. It's probably also good to understand what features that they're giving, right? Um, so I'm going to skim the features, and then I'm going to walk you through how I built it. I used the, used their template, and then and then um, we'll just observe some things around it. Okay, so one of the things here is if I can figure out, yeah, here it is. This section, this section in the R in the architecture. Essentially, what they're going to do is replicate what we did last time, uh, which is they'll create a security group in a public subnet. Uh, they'll put your, um, uh, your, which pretty much has the same permissions as what we had done previously, right? And it will um, also put your Bastion host there. It does add an auto-scaling group to allow you to spin up more than one Bastion host um, and then across multiple subnets. So that's one, one thing that um, we did not do previously. Um, and then this, most of the stuff is on the host itself. And I'm going to cover... If you roll down here, they have some best practices on, on Bastion hosts. And um, let's see. Uh, uh, I guess this is. Well, most of the stuff here is uh, basically the security group stuff. Now, let me pause the video for a second because there's a particularly interesting section about the Bastion host itself that I'm going to find that. Give me a second. So, long story short, I couldn't find the list that I was thinking of, but the, the two items that, um, that kind of caught my eye that are covered in their deployment guide. So this is the same document I was looking at here. They had this concept of, one was you know, creating a, a, a banner, right? That when people secure shell in without credentials, that they basically present them with a banner saying, hey, you, you, know, you're not you don't have access. So that was one feature that I was like, okay, I probably should figure out how to do that. And the second one, which was a little bit more complicated, they have a whole section on logging. And we'll look at this a little bit later, how it works. But basically, uh, logging, uh, basically what commands are being run in the host, and then storing it, not only storing it locally, but also storing it in CloudWatch. So you can now have an audit trail of all the commands that were written or executed on the host. And... Long story short, trying to do this on your own, you know, it's doable, but it took a fair amount of work to do, and I decided that it wasn't worth my time, and it was better just to use their uh, their deployment. So essentially, the deployment looks like uh, I'm not going to. I've already deployed it, but I'm going to just go to the same point. I'll show you. Basically, you you go to this uh, step one. You have your account ready. Um, I can't even remember what you do. Basically, you just got to pick a region. And in this case, we already have a subnet, right? And we already have a key pair, right? And so you go to launch stack, you say quick start for existing VPC. It starts up a cloud formation template. Do you need to change your, uh, it always defaults to Oregon when you do this. So you have to switch this to your region, right? In question. 
and you there's your uh, the templates there you can look at the template if you want to troubleshoot it yourself um, and then you name your stack you pick your VPC subnets you know there's a you know not too many choices and you basically hit next and then you're done and then it spins up and you have your bastion host um, now the only other thing I did on top of once I have my bastion host so in this case actually you can see ah, you can already see that I already had run this earlier and I have my it's called Linux bastion right and so the main things here are you get um, you'll get a in your um, VPC you'll get a new security group you'll get an auto scaling group so this is one thing at a time uh, security group you get the security group called Linux bastion right here right and then you get an EC2 instance that's running from an auto scaling group so let's go to EC2 um, EC2 and so now I have four running instances right the three which are my private instances and then I have the Linux bastion right and um, it's in that security group and then this is actually being built of an auto scaling group so you get an auto you get an auto scaling group down here somewhere too auto scaling group and you'll see an auto scaling group here that's basically I've only set to one right and that's about it now there's a couple things about using it um, when I log into it so let's go back to it um, oh it also gives you a static IP address too so you see this elastic IP so it's going to give you also a permanent IP address that you can then use um, going forward so let me copy this and I'll just show you one last feature so again this is all you could have done a lot of this yourself but the logging thing was a little bit difficult so I decided this is by AWS it's easier just to use their stuff um, so if I secure shell to Ubuntu, I used Ubuntu as mine. You can choose your operating system too with this template. Um, paste, and I didn't have to provide my key and my PEM file because I already used that agent business, right? Um, so ls ls ls. I'm just gonna run a couple of ls commands, and then who am I? Which is probably Ubuntu, right? Okay, so what I did there was I just ran some commands, and I wanted to see what it looked like from CloudWatch. Can I actually see me running those commands? So if you go to CloudWatch, so let's do that. If you look at CloudWatch, you will notice that under logs, there's a new log group. Where is it? Oh, it's just not scrolling. Okay. Um, here it is. And yeah. Down here, here's my ls command and who am I down here? Right. So the idea here is um, you can see this logging just I just pretty much caught what I just did. Um, that's about it. So of course, the only the, oh the only thing last thing I did um, just so you know is I then um, go back to here. I grabbed the VPC ID of the security group or not VPC ID the security group ID of the whatever the security groups here that I created right. So it's one of these the security group ID and then I went into my because I did want to protect my 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 um, private subnet so that that I can only port 20 was only allowed in on the security group for um, for that for that like private subnet right um, I wanted to protect it based on security group so if that means I went into my Terraform to do's or us app Let's see if I can find it quickly enough um, in here you will notice that I went in my machine is behaving slowly actually it's right here good so in my EC2 here right in main I had a web bastion 
security group, I mean, um, a security rule for it. And so I'm allowing port 22 in, and then I pass this down as a variable. So it's var bash and security group ID. So it's, it's a variable I define as a, uh, as a base variable here, right? And then I pass it down the chain. So here's bash and group ID, hard coded in. Then I pass the variables. Then I pass it down to the, the module, and then I consume it in the module. So um, that was the only other thing I did back in my Terraform config to kind of integrate back in with the uh, bastion that was created by uh, CloudFormation, essentially. Okay, that's it.